all right? And what do you think my sexual relationship brand just did? It tanked. She's going to go around, and she's going to hear every, everybody she can talk to, your friends, everyone else, and God knows they will. He just did it this way. Oh, my God, I can't believe. I know I wouldn't want to be treated that way. I suggest you guys don't do either. But at the same time, there's a ruthless efficiency on just getting the job done. And I had a close friend of mine who was dating a girl, great gal, just wasn't going where he wanted it to go. Some of the values weren't aligned. Otherwise, they would have been able to maintain it. And she was more than willing to let it ride. Not necessarily healthy, not necessarily productive, but that's what people do. And at one point, he just realized to maintain his own integrity, to respect her, to respect what they have, to respect the memories they created, he couldn't do it anymore and wasn't going to do it anymore. And what he ended up doing was going up to her house, ringing the doorbell. She answers and says, I have, you have a key. And he goes, I know, gives it to her. And he says, I love you. I care for you. And this hurts me into immense degree. But we're not right together. And I can't do this to you. And I can't do it to myself. Gives her the key. And he goes, I'm going to miss you. And I can't see you again. It's going to hurt too much. It's going to influence me hugged her, gave her a kiss, they cried, and he left. That, to me, is brutally honest. It's equivalent of shooting somebody in the head and walking away, just not as brutal. It has integrity, has merit. All right? It doesn't mean you have to always do it that way. I'm also kind of fond of a relationship where you do want to maintain uh, a friendship after you break up with somebody. I think an exit interview is an outstanding idea. We do it in business. Sit down without passion, give it a little time, and have the exit interview. I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but you sit down and talk about what were, the, what were the problems did you see, what were the problems I see. You're not going to be throwing eggs at each other. It's going to be emotionally volatile. The idea is not to have drama, but to come to a relative understanding, to have your peace, give her the opportunity of, of peace of mind and respect, and call it a day. You know, it's an alternative. There's a myriad of other ways. My, my suggestion is if you're going to get in relationships, know how you're going to get out of them. It's kind of like in business as well. Your first day of business, you better ask how are you going to get out of business? What's, what's your exit plan? Not that you're planning for failure. It's just not allow companies go on forever. Not all relationships go on forever. But having a, an idea of how to handle these touchy, highly charged emotional settings and having an ability to kind of think it through before you have it, you're going to be a hell of a lot better off than you're in the moment. Because the last thing you want to do is somebody ha doesn't know how to do it, and God knows I've faced this, of a woman who realized this isn't working for me, is panicking, feeling pressured in any number of ways, and how do you get out of a relationship you don't want to be in and don't have the skill set to get out of it appropriately? You get out of it inappropriately. All right? And I can tell you, to this day, she regrets it. To this day, she's earned the reputation for what she did. All right? I don't like it. I don't like what she did. She didn't have the skill sets involved. I can understand that. I can forgive her for that. But at the same time, I don't respect her for how she handled it. She knew better. She could have, she could have acted better, and she chose to do the easy path. She chose the easy, expeditious thing, and that was to behave abominably. All right? Don't do that to yourselves. Don't do that to the relationship. Don't do that to the good memories that you had, because that's kind of all you have. All right. All right. We've talked about making the cut. Uh, one of the other aspects on making the cut is this aspect of, of the notion of learning through failures. And you need to be able to understand that failure is often where you're going to find the most growth. All right. And you need to develop a personal culture of personal failure without becoming a failure yourself. Uh, there's a great TED talk uh, by McChrystal who gave a, a talk just about, just about that. Uh, U.S. military special forces commander talked about this idea of a, developing a culture of failure without being a failure. I learned it in the same place he did in the military. It's paid huge dividends to me, you know, of being able to push yourself to, to try something new and know that when you push yourself, part of the cost of pushing yourself is the risk of failure. Recognize that as part of doing business. Don't get in the habit of just being a failure, okay? But know that you're going to try, you're going to stretch, you're going to, you're going to try to actually achieve something you haven't done before. Recognize that you are, and don't beat yourself up when you don't quite measure up to what you expected. All right? Uh, all right. 
Now, part of what we talked about is when you actually make the cut. I would like to follow up with the other end of the shovel, okay, when you actually get, are the one that gets dumped. And this is where the damage typically is, gets done. When it's not a choice of yours, you didn't necessarily see it coming, what the hell do you do? All right? The important aspect to hold on to any relationship, especially when it ends, is not to hold on to anything past its lifetime. Don't hold on to anything that's already gone. All right? Part of the analysis here is to recognize when it's time to let go. And that is just basically facing reality. And the harsh reality on this one is she's gone. All right? And it's going to hurt. All right? Which brings us to the idea that, that resistance to reality is a hallmark of suffering. All right? There's a difference between being hurt, being in pain, and suffering. Suffering is something you choose to do for yourself, something that you take on yourself. You choose to suffer something. All right? Pain you can get through. Hurt you can get through. Disappointment, frustration you can get through. A sense of loss you can get through. These aren't suffering. These are real emotions that are legitimate, that are tangible to an event during, during a particular piece of time. All right? Suffering, on the other hand, is a willful choice to endure something through holding on to something that's gone. It doesn't have a point other than the suffering itself. All right? I'll also say this. I don't think pain is circumscribable. I don't think you can get around feeling the pain and actually grow and have a healthy life. You have to face this. All right? Part of that is realizing you're vulnerable, you're emotional, you have a sense of loss, you've lost something you are projecting, you have expectations for your life, plans, events, a tremendous amount of assets allocated to future projection. That's normal. You need to allow yourself that opportunity to grieve that loss, to feel that loss, to express that loss, to be able to let it go. If you don't, time will not heal all wounds. Time coupled with healing, and appropriate healing, will heal, heal wounds, all right? Many of them are going to be very, very profound. Nothing more profound than a loss of a family. Never, nothing more lost than a loss of a wife and a child, okay? And what's worse than even death, these people are still alive. These are choices they're making because of a failed relationship, all right? Again, the aspect is that you're not a failure just because something did fail. Don't get stuck in that rut. Another kind of aspect I'll hold on to is that even in your darkest hour, it only lasts 60 minutes. Your darkest moment only lasts that long. So as you're facing these immensely difficult and challenging situations emotionally, embrace it and know it doesn't last. Don't sit down and think this reality is going to be your, your existence. It's not. It's only going to be your existence if you allow it. My aspect is don't allow it to take over your life. Letting go of the relationship, letting go of the woman is about you, not your ex. This is something you do for yourself. And it's an aspect of forgiveness. You can't let go until you forgive yourself. And I'm not necessarily saying you don't forgive her. That comes at a much later st standpoint. But initially, you need to give yourself for forgiveness. And that is often a difficult task. We're not trained to do it. We're not cultured to do it. But it's something I think is a critical aspect to natural healing, natural growth progression, especially in an adverse situation where you've been dumped. And it's not pretty. It never is. All right, chances are you won't move on until you're actually ready to. All right, and that's terribly telling. Uh, I've known, I, I, I tend to cling on to old relationships, even if I've been years later, you kind of hold out hope. You kind of ho hold out for something. And often what I realize is I'm holding out, not necessarily for that relationship or that individual, I'm holding out hope for the individual I wanted her to be. I'm holding out hope for that relationship in the way in which I wanted or anticipated it to be, and the reality is that relationship never existed. All right? So often I think we cling to things because we wish they were the way they weren't. Recognize the difference between the two. One's a real loss, the other is, is a loss of anticipation or desire. Still hurts, but the reality is when you're faced with it and you have her back, let's say, God forbid, it's not going to be what you want it to be. 
Now, as far as a breakup, I sit down and say there's going to be a number of steps you're going to want to take. The first and most important, especially when you've been dumped, is going to what I'm going to call she talks. You're going to literally need to detox yourself from that relationship. The first and most critical aspect to this is don't have contact. Don't write her. Don't contact her. Don't call. Don't stalk. Don't drive by. Don't let her in the house. Don't communicate. Stay the hell away. All right? You cannot get past your time to, to, to get through this without having contact. All right? It's a form of addiction. All right? It's, it's a hormonal addiction. It's an emotional addiction. It's a behavioral addiction. And she's damn cute. You liked her in the first place. And it's a, it's a solution that wasn't of your design. This isn't what you wanted. You're very, very susceptible. Treat yourself like a recovering addict. It's going to be very similar. Part of that process is to, to acknowledge it, to acknowledge that you had expectations that were lost, acknowledge that you had desires and wishes that weren't fulfilled. All right? The other aspect, and I think this is part of something that you don't hear a whole lot of, is start to accept accountability and accept responsibility for its failure. And I'm not saying you're to blame. But take on ownership of the aspects you were. What role did you play in this? What role enabled this sort of to take place? What role did you play to put yourself to make yourself so vulnerable? Part of that is then looking at it and saying, what can I gain? How do I prevent this? How do I improve? How do I grow? And I think that's what the most critical aspect of the entire growth sequence of healing is to sit down and say, how do I become a better man for having gone through this experience, no matter how heinous it was? What you ultimately don't want to do is be the same guy you were when you first had that relationship. You ultimately want to be a better man. What can you salvage out of this burning house that you're going to be able to take forward and make a better life for yourself? Often they're going to be very minor things, but they're going to be significant. Sense of pride for having put yourself out there. Sense of worth for having been vulnerable, willing to engage this, to have lived up to your ideals. Even if you're egregiously wrong, did you live up to your own expectations? These are things you can't be taken from you. They're yours. Don't give them away. Don't throw them away with a relationship, even a failed one. All right. This is where I'm going to sit down and be a little more confrontational uh, as far as what community members will actually sit down and talk about. There's this notion uh, of what happens when you have a relationship, either you dump her or more importantly she dumps you, and this idea of how do I get her back. The community response is cut her loose, new pussy, it solves all your problems. I'm not a big believer in that. All right? I'm also not in a big believer is that she's the one. I don't think there is just the one. There are billions of people, well, probably a billion people on this planet. You start doing the numbers, okay, you probably have a lot of relationship potential here. All right? But the issue is that you found somebody that you value one reason or another, and you're not quite ready to let it go, or it's reemerging from a distance path. The question is, is, is when is it healthy to reengage in a relationship and resurrect an old relationship?